Could Northern Ireland survive a pandemic? The National Risk Register of Civil Emergencies. Sounds pretty scary, right? Every year or two, the government draws up this lengthy tome of serious threats that could wipe out us humans. Its current top four are terrorist attacks, coastal flooding, volcanic eruptions abroad, and finally, the dreaded pandemic influenza. Now, I can see why there's a panic. We've all had the standard influenza in winter, but pandemic is something else when a new aggressive strain emerges and spreads getting out of control, causing a global epidemic. We saw this at its worst in 1918, when soldiers returning from World War I brought with them the H1N1 avian flu. This spread around the globe, wiping out 50 to 100 million people in fewer than 18 months. The NI Department of Health say that if pandemic flu were to hit right now, with an attack rate of 25% and a fatality rate of 0.37%, it would kill 50,000 people in the UK in 15 weeks. 1,500 here in Northern Ireland. And that is the best case scenario. Not good, eh? But what can we do about it? Vaccination is the key. But it's like an arms race for our enemy, and these new viruses are unpredictable, so we cannot prepare a vaccine in advance. Everyone could potentially be at risk. Few people, if anyone, might have immunity. And we wouldn't even know if particular groups or age ranges are susceptible until after the virus has taken hold. Right now, our Department of Health is stockpiling antiviral drugs that could shorten the duration of the disease alleviate symptoms and prevent complications and serious illness. But if we had to team up with the World Health Organization, international partners and industry to develop a new vaccine and pump it out, it could take four to six months after the pandemic has already gripped us. Without intervention and with no significant immunity in the population, historical evidence suggests that the average person infects between 1.4 and 1.8 other people. Enclosed in communities such as prisons, boarding schools and residential homes, this number could be even higher. I'm sure you can imagine that in this situation, Northern Ireland might get a little bit... tetchy. Fear and apprehension are normal, but things have moved on since 1918. We now have a much better medical understanding of levels of hygiene and the spread of disease. And more crucially, we also have the internet and even social media on our side. Twitter gets a bad rap, but pages like at Ebola Alert have helped save lives in Nigeria by disseminating accurate information and providing a platform for discussion. Facebook relayed messages from UNICEF in the region, while the BBC have a service on WhatsApp, West Africa's most widely used online social media platform, providing text and audio information about the symptoms of Ebola and warning people how to avoid spreading the disease. So if it came to the worst now, we'd be able to get all the information we need on local healthcare arrangements, be able to have live Q&A discussions to separate fact from fiction of the disease, and get public advice and instructions without even leaving our homes. And let's face it, we're a pretty tough and resilient bunch here in Northern Ireland. We face down SARS, bird flu, swine flu, mad cow's disease. So what's next? The zombie apocalypse? Bring it on.